Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about why hypothyroidism is worse with iron deficiency. We're going to be discussing the connection between iron deficiency and your thyroid, um, what happens to your body, especially your thyroid, when your levels are low, how to test for your levels, and how to replace them. Um, so let's, let's jump right in here. First I want to talk about the connection between your thyroid uh, and what I'm calling iron status in your body. And a lot of the information I'm talking about here, I have links to clinical studies if you want to reference those. Um, but all of this stuff is just normal physiology and is proven to be uh, true and accurate. So first of all, um, thyroid or iron function, or the amount of iron you have in your body, I should say, um, is important because it influences how much thyroid hormone your body is able to create. So in states of low thyroid hormone, your body is not going to be able to produce enough thyroid hormone, which is obviously going to exacerbate or worsen hypothyroidism. In addition, low iron also is associated with low levels of free T3. And you know if you've watched any of my other videos that free T3 is the most important thyroid hormone. It is the active form of thyroid hormone, and it's the thing that you should be the most concerned about. So obviously that's not a good thing. Kind of tracking off of that one, we also know that low levels of iron diminish or reduce T4 to T3 conversion, which again is a really big deal because that's how your body creates T3. It takes T4, it um, modulates it a little bit, removes an iodine, and then it turns it into T3. But if your iron is low, it's not able to do that, which means that if you are taking T4-only thyroid medications, such as Synthroid or Levothyroxine, and you have low iron, your body is going to have a difficult time taking that T4 and activating it or turning it into T3, which is a thing that you that your body needs to do. Here's a graph which shows uh, transfer and saturation on the x-axis and TSH on the y. Basically, all you need to know about this graph is it's showing this, you see this line here, the trend, is that um, as your transfer and saturation decreases, which is a sign of low iron, TSH tends to increase, which is a sign of hypothyroidism. Um, and then lastly, I guess this is also fairly important, if you don't have a sufficient amount of um, iron in your body, it diminishes the effect of iodine supplementation. So let's say you're somebody taking iodine because you know that iodine is important for your thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. If your iron levels are low and you're taking iodine, your body's not able to take that iodine and stick it in the thyroid gland for use. So again, that's five or six reasons why the, the amount of iron that you have in your body is really important for your thyroid. But there's, I think, another important, important thing that we need to touch on here, and that is that Iron deficiency is incredibly important in thyroid patients specifically because most doctors are conditioned to diagnose iron deficiency only in the setting of anemia. All right, And what anemia means is a low amount of red blood cells or a low amount of hemoglobin. And most doctors only check your iron if they find that you are anemic to begin with. But you need to sort of flip that and you need to, if you are a thyroid patient, you should be looking at your iron first and foremost. You need to be going to your iron regardless of what your RBCs are or, you know, regard, let's say you are not anemic you, and you have thyroid disease, you still need to look at your iron. And the reason for that is thyroid patients are incredibly sensitive to even small changes in iron levels. And the reason for that is quite simple. So let's say you have a condition like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So you probably know that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease in which your body attacks and inflames your thyroid gland. So obviously, if your thyroid gland is under attack and it's suffering from inflammation, it's not able to produce thyroid hormone as much or to the same degree that a healthy person would be able to. But if you take that person and you throw on a little bit of iron deficiency for all the reasons that I mentioned just previously, that person is going to have an even harder time producing thyroid hormone. And so that's why this is very important. If you're a healthy person and your iron is low, but your thyroid is fine, you're not going to feel the symptoms quite as much as a person who has thyroid disease. So you must, must, must look at your iron levels, regardless of what your RBCs are, um, and, and address that if, if it's present or if there's any issues. So that's why it's so important. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of iron deficiency, just so you have an, an idea. Now, there are some crossover between the symptoms of iron deficiency and, of course, um, uh, anemia, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, hypothyroidism, but also iron deficiency does carry with it um, so, some unique symptoms as well. So here they are: uh, fatigue, you know, weakness, pale skin, especially on the palms or creases or the creases in your palms. You can also see it um, underneath your eyes as well. Shortness of breath, especially uh, shortness of breath when exercising. Um, dizziness, especially with exertion or with exercise. Again, cravings for ice. It, these people often want to chew it or just 
they always want to chew ice or eat it. They tend to have cold hands and cold feet. Again, that with fatigue kind of goes with hypothyroidism, but iron deficiency makes it worse. And then I would say this is some of the, mo the most important for a lot of people from a cosmetic standpoint, and that is brittle nails and or thin dry hair, but also hair loss. And we'll talk about a little uh, the association between um, iron deficiency and hair loss in the FAQ at the end here. And then, of course, headaches as well. So if you have any of these symptoms, some are unique to iron deficiency, some are um, similar to those of hypothyroidism, definitely, definitely check um, your iron levels, which we're going to talk about um, in a second here. Um, and I would say, just as a blanket statement, that if you have known hypothyroidism or if you suspect you have hypothyroidism, you must be looking at your iron no matter what. Re again, regardless of whatever is happening with your RBCs or your hemoglobin. So uh, another question I get asked frequently is, does this information apply to me? The answer is almost always yes. Uh, most of the information I present here um, applies to those people with, uh, with a thyroid, those people with Hashimoto's, and then of course those people without a thyroid. Because remember, even if you don't have a thyroid, some of the information I mentioned previously is not that relevant, but the other information still is, such as the diminished ability to convert T4 to T3. That matters whether you have a thyroid or not because it's not happening in your thyroid gland. It's happening in your body. So again, it does matter if you have Hashimoto's. It does matter if you do not have an or if you do not have a thyroid because it's been irradiated or because it's been removed. So how do you know if your iron levels are optimal? This is actually quite easy um, compared to some of the other stuff that I talk about on my channel here. Ferritin, uh, well, there's several lab tests that you can order. I would say ferritin's probably the most important. And again, all doctors know how to do this. If you just ask them for uh, generic iron studies, they should be able to order all of these for you. Um, all you need to do is take those labs and then compare it to the, re to the reference ranges that I'm giving you here, not the reference ranges that come with your lab tests. So number one and perhaps more, most important is ferritin. An, an optimal level for ferritin is around 40 to 50, especially if you have thyroid disease. I will sometimes push that up somewhere between 50 and 60, but let's just say 40 to 50 for this conversation. Serum iron should be middle of the reference range, and I'm talking smack dab in the middle. should not be towards the bottom end or towards the high end. In fact, iron is very much as a Goldilocks nutrient. It needs to be just right, and so you want it right in the middle. TIBC, which stands for total iron, iron binding capacity. Again, you want that in the middle of the reference range. And then lastly, percent saturation, you want that somewhere between 35 and 38 percent. Now, some of these are just icing on the cake. Um, if you're, if these are confusing, they don't, don't let them be confusing. Focus just on this one, ferritin. Um, now, it's not 100 percent accurate for your iron because high levels can be associated with inflammation. But for the most part, this is a good thing to look at if you're a patient and if you just, you know, if you want to avoid confusion, just look directly um, at your ferritin level. So how do you supplement with it or how do you increase your iron? Now the good news is iron supplements are available all over the counter. So unlike some of the other therapies that I talk about, which require a prescription, this one does not. Now the, the bad news, I guess, is that you must use the right type of iron because there's several different types of iron and supplements that you can take and some work for thyroid patients and some do not. Now often Iron does come in a prescription as well, um, just so you know. It's available over the counter and in prescription form. And doctors, especially ones that are, you know aren't trained to to look at the thyroid, might give you a prescription for iron. But the problem with that one is it can often cause GI symptoms such as constipation, or it can be because it's difficult to digest and it can cause stomach pains. So a lot of people tend to not use it, especially if they have thyroid disease, because they already suffer from GI-related issues. Now, you can bypass a lot of those negative symptoms by using liquid iron and certain iron capsules, which I have links to here that you can take a look at. So liquid iron tends to be um, a lot more gentle, or it's gentle on the stomach, so it's, it's more easily absorbed by the body, so you're actually getting the iron into your system. And then there are some absorbable capsules as well that you can take a look at here. So I'll let you look at those if you feel that you need it, but a word of caution, only use um, only use iron supplements if you have a documented deficiency. Don't take it if you suspect you have iron deficiency. Take it only if you do have iron deficiency uh, because you can, you can cause problems by taking too much iron. So just a word of warning there. And then how do you take it? So make sure that if you're taking iron, and, and here I recommend liquid iron, make sure that you are taking it away from food. You should be on an empty stomach. Uh, you want to make sure that you are taking it away from other supplements, with the exception of B vitamins, which we'll talk about in a second, away from coffee, away from tea. Um, 
and away from, like I said, other supplements that you might be taking. The, well, the exception would be taking your iron with vitamin C or a glass of lemon, lemon water because, well, I should actually add there too with B vitamins. Those can all be taken with iron because they help your intestinal tract absorb the iron, which is very important. Um, and then lastly, you should make sure that you take your iron at least four hours away from any thyroid hormone medication you may be taking. Um, the reason for that is if you take them both at the same time, the iron can bind to the thyroid hormone, like the level thyroxine or synthroid or whatever it is that you're taking. It can bind to them, they can bind to each other and inactivate both, which would be a terrible scenario. Obviously one that you don't want because you need both in your body. And then if they bind to each other and inactivate them, you're not going to absorb them. So do not take them anywhere near each other. Often I'll recommend that you take one in the morning and one in the evening as far away as you possibly can. And then, of course, what you can do is you can track your progress by following your ferritin. And ferritin is that marker I talked about before. And so as you take iron supplements or liquid iron, whatever it is that you decide to take, you should be seeing that ferritin increase. If that ferritin is not increasing, then you may need to look at other things. How, you know, how is your GI tract doing? Are you, are you suffering from malabsorption? Um, is it just that do you need to switch from liquid to capsules or from capsules to liquid or do you need something more intense like an iron transfusion you'll have to look at a kind of all these things but you should see some improvement at least an increase in your ferritin within a couple months of supplementing and i do want to do want to talk quickly about iron deficiency and hair loss because that's very important for thyroid patients and it's something that they do suffer from um, so the question is, can iron deficiency cause hair loss? The answer is absolutely. So iron deficiency, as far as I'm concerned, is probably one of the most common causes of hair loss. Um, and it's also one of the most underappreciated causes of hair loss. And this problem is confounded in thyroid patients because low thyroid hormone, or, or the being the state of hypothyroidism, results in hair loss. But so does iron deficiency. And they're two separate conditions that thyroid patients tend to have. And just addressing one without addressing the other will not cause your hair to grow back. So you have to look at both. You need to have a, a sufficient amount of thyroid hormone. And you also need to have a sufficient amount of iron. And just, well, taking iron may improve your thyroid, but taking thyroid hormone will not improve your iron. So you have to look at both of those things independently and address them both. That's why it's so, so, so important. I have other FAQs here. I'm not going to go over them now um, because I don't know if they're relevant. But if you do have more questions, I go over a lot of these things in detail. And then lastly, I also have a list of clinical studies and references that, I, that I've that i talked about here. So if you have any questions or want to read up more about these things, here's all the information for you. You can go directly to this blog post to get it. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Just remember that if you have thyroid issues or suspect that you do, look at your iron, address it, imp improve your iron if you can, and I think you'll feel a lot better. If you have any questions about iron deficiency or your thyroid, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer those in the next day or two here. So um, that's pretty much it, and otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.